we went to the town of Lije, uh, one just one month after it was completely razed to the ground by the Turkish army, um, which was, I mean, literally every single day was like a film, I have to say. Um, and we walked through the ashes of Lije, um, and we took testimony, um, uh, first-hand accounts from so many people, how uh, the Turkish army had um, raised, uh, set fire to, raked with gunfire, the whole town of Lije. Every single house was uh, destroyed. Every single shop was systematically burned. Millions of rounds of ammunition were just peppered all over all the buildings everywhere. People were burned in rooms, alive. People were shot in the streets as they ran for cover. Um, so again, we had a very horrible experience at the hands of the army. Um, but the two Oscar Gundam journalists had it worse. They had hoods put over their heads. Um, they were told they were going to be killed. They were tortured. Um, they were taken in a white Renault outside the walls of Diyarbakir. And they had a gun put to their heads. Um, and then they were told that all the British delegation had been killed. Were they happy that they took us to this village? Um, and then the car door just closed um, and they made their way back to the offices in, uh, in Diyarbakir, to Osgogunda. And they started writing the story. <laughs> Incredible. I tried to get, actually, I did actually try to get counselling when I came home, um, but that didn't really work. And so the only thing that really worked was um, was campaigning uh, about the situation. So I've also, and visited Turkey and stayed, you know, and see, have seen the Kurdish experience with my own eyes over and over again, the racism against Kurdish people. We began an official forced assimilation policy of the Kurdish people. Um, so Kurds who had been living in that area for longer, you know, going back thousands and thousands of years with a richer culture, richer language, um, were now told that they had to be Turks and they had to be happy to be Turks. So they had to, they, so they actually put big lettering on the mountain sides saying you have to be happy to be a Turk, you know, you, so it was like a brain trying to brainwash the Kurdish people into uh, being Turks. And so began, you know, um, the Kurdish people's struggle against this racist forced assimilation policy, uh, which continues to this day. The ideas of Abdul Rajan, which are a democratic nation, basically, which, which are radical, you know, like radical ideas about representation and communal living, basically. These are a threat to the regional um, dictators and regional regimes. The, all the international powers know um, what a dictatorship and what a brutal regime Turkey is. Um, and, you know, and the only reason that they um, that they conspire or are part of this conspiracy against the Kurds and against, uh, and for the, you know, and, and not speaking out about the isolation of Abdul Rajlan, um, is trade and, you know, and it's big money and, and weapons deals and everything. But I do, again, I do think that the truth though, <laughs> the truth about the Kurdish issue is, is stronger. It's not just in the nineties, but also in 2015, destroying large Kurdish cities like Nusaib and Jizre, Shirnak, Sur, you know, they've thrown absolutely everything against the Kurds, but still Kurds are resisting every single day. And arguably Kurds are stronger than they ever have been at any point in their history in terms of their, um, you know, the in terms of the awareness of their identity and, you know, and, and their political strength in, in the Middle East. So there's not going to be, you know, we all know that there's never going to be a military solution to the Kurdish issue. So there has to be a peaceful political solution to the Kurdish issue. And it has to, you know, it's, 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 it's got to come sooner rather than later. You can't, you know, continue this barbaric policy of suppression 
and mass murder um, and mass jailings and mass bombings and colonization and invasions. You know, and in many ways, Erdogan is a threat to, you know, democratic countries in the West as well, as my case proves, you know, that um, now British people are being tried under laws that are designed in favor of of, of Turkey, of, of Erdogan. I can understand uh, why we say that um, capitalist countries, c- countries of, of, of modernity, um, you know, see the ideas of Ocalan as as a threat. Uh, so I would urge people to um, support the uh, this freedom march that is um, taking place in Kurdish cities. Uh, people have to um, continue to campaign, com- com- continue to stand up because uh, we have one of the most um, moral um, campaigns there is in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And the truth is our strongest weapon and we have to continue. Yeah. Prolonging of the war is a crime in my view. And so everybody who's watching the Kurdish issue, you know, if if you're a government, if you're an NGO, if you're, you know, don't stick your head in the sand. And uh, um, for the UK government, certainly they should be using their offices they're very good offices with Turkey, not to secure arms deals, but they should be using their offices to push Turkey um, to finally solve the Kurdish issue in a peaceful political way and help them, you know, because they have the experience of um, conflict resolution in Ireland. Um, and they have, you know, they have a lot to offer Turkey in terms of that expertise and uh, yeah, let's let's hope that 2024 is finally the year uh, that Ojalan um, is the the isolation is broken from uh, Abdul Rojlan that we can hear from Abdul Rojlan that uh, the tens of thousands of political prisoners who are still languishing in Turkish jails are freed um, that there's an amnesty and let's hope that there uh, is a move towards a peaceful political solution. Thank you.